Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Uh, this is Kelly and uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to go ahead and, um, well, introduce you to uh, a new channel name, right? So instead of uh, RC Mechanic, we're going with RC Mechanic Garage because, well, you just never know what I'm going to work on and RC Mechanic just... I guess uh, I had everybody thinking that, you know, I was working on RCs only, but I'm not. I work on full-size stuff. I may work on a mower. I may work on an ATV. I may be, I got a couple Jeeps outside I've been working on. And I thought that RC Mechanic Garage would make it more well-rounded and uh, maybe bring in a different audience. So, if you want to join for this ride, make sure to like, subscribe. Hit that bell for any you know upcoming videos also you can find me on Instagram as uh, RC mechanic garage all one word or on Facebook as RC mechanic garage so come visit me there all right all right today we're gonna be working on the Jelande 2 sport cruiser I have been doing a light kit on it and doing a little bit of detail work on the interior I'm not really a scale guy, but you know, I don't mind delving into it a little bit. So for the interior here, I went ahead and I put the decals in here. So it's got a new dash, it's got buttons, it's got a glove box, it's got, you know, every 4x4 needs a chrome handle for the shift knob. Uh, I made the, the horn button on the steering wheel chrome. When I got this truck, uh, the steering wheel was actually just floating around inside it. It wasn't even attached. So, this is an RTR. We're going to blame it on the factory guys. Okay. Uh, picked up one of these chrome pens right here. And just did a little bit here, there, and all around. Uh, made it look a lot better, I think. Went ahead and I installed the light kit. I've not fired it up yet. As you can see, it's all right here. All the way back to the bumper. This is the Jolande A2 light kit you can get from RC Four Wheel Drive. Uh, it's a really nice kit. It actually fits in everything. One thing I gotta tell you though, when you do these signal lights up here, make sure to not over tighten them. It's really easy to do. So, we also got a Toyota emblem on the, in the grill now. I did buy the CC hand one kit and uh, I didn't like it because it didn't look right. So we just skipped it and I used the emblem instead. So it ended up being a really expensive emblem, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, some of the stickers in the sticker kit that I found uh, with the cruiser sticker right here, it, it'll most likely change. It, it looks kind of hokey, right? And then I went and we got the Toyota in the back. But we'll drive it here in the back. In the CC hand kit, there was uh, some license plates. I decided to go with the Montana one for now. So I did not find the uh, mirror stickers for the mirror. So I used that chrome pen and I just colored these in. And I think that's going to be the extent of the detail on this one right now. I'll probably get the metal uh, emblems for here. I know this is in the wrong place. It's all good. Okay, so coming up on this truck, we're gonna do some fender flares. So we're gonna put these on. I'm debating on whether I should carve that out a little bit, give it a little more room or not. Uh, maybe go Oh no, eighth inch all the way around. What do you think? Be happy to know. Leave a comment. All right. <laughs> then we got. They have a new bumper for the front. It's a CC hand bumper with a winch mount right up here, and I also have a winch for it. 
decided to go with the old style, uh, what would have been, well, I guess you'd say, uh, PTO driven. It just got gears on the side, I'd say it's PTO driven. Because this is an older truck, I figure we'll go with that. Like I said, I don't go too much into scale, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to delve into it a little bit. I uh, still need to put some oil in these shocks. Since this truck is so top heavy, uh, it's going to need that. So, what we're going to do in this video today is, I'm going to go ahead and put the interior back in, uh, get the, the lights routed for the light kit, and then we're going to go ahead and work on the flares and the front bumper and put the winch on. I don't have a controller for the winch, but I can at least get it installed. I got the uh, wires all uh, secured right up in here, and uh, I ran them up along the side, and for now, I just put the excess up in here. I, I'm not doing anything with the back yet, but what I want to do is uh, show you, I already did the passenger side. <clears throat> As you can see, the flare is on. I'm just gonna show you what I did to uh, get that centered, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what's going on here. So what I did, is I basically just set this up here. As you can see, on the back side, there's a groove for it to fit in the wheel well, right? So I just set that up here, like this. Make sure it's centered. And then I... Not sure if you can see it. Maybe you can now. The center hole right here. I'm going to drill that. And that'll be my guide for the rest. Okay, so that should be... That should pretty much center the uh, fender flare. And I did drop a couple nuts, so hopefully they gave me more than enough I don't know so we'll just go ahead and shove this screw in through here I made sure to uh, not make the screw hole too big because then this thing would like be all over the plate that's in there have this pair of needle nose that I don't really know what the intended use for it is but it came in the set so we're going to use it. That has a center right there. As you can see, it's a little bit, if you look right there, it's uh, pushed out a little bit. That means it's a little bit too tight. So I'll have to back that off later. But at the moment, it'll be fine. So next thing I did is I did the very ends. So I'll do this one. Go ahead and do the very end of this one. And then I just go ahead and uh, drill the rest. The very end here, the very end there, and the top center here. Now I can go ahead and do this one, this one, and this one, and everything should be fine. This is what it looks like with the flares on, and I unintentionally uh, give it a about a seven millimeter lift. The reason why I say that is because when I put these here back on and put them on backwards and reverse and I, I guess that you could say that is to my advantage I don't know because when I go to put this back on because I have uh, the size of wheels I have on here uh, when I articulate this thing like right there is like max right um, it actually rubs on the flare. The front, I have a little bit of room. If I moved it back just a little bit, I have a little bit of room, I could probably center that right here. Right? The front is not an issue. The question to everybody is this. 
do I want to make this a trail truck or a trail and rock capable truck? With the wheelbase where it is right now, it's, it's a great trail truck, right? If I was to do rocks or heavy climbs, anything like that, um, I'm gonna need to extend the wheelbase. I already know I'm gonna need to extend this rear right here. The beauty about um, working with a, a four link or a three link is that you can make it longer or shorter and change the wheelbase. You can change the wheelbase, you can change the pinion angle, you can change a lot of things, right? <clears throat> this is true with a little car or a big car. Mistake I made with my my Cherokee, right? And we'll go into that later in another video. But <clears throat> I am thinking that if I moved the rear back and depending on how this front bumper lands right here I may need to move the front up because I want a, a approach and a departure angle that to be as low as possible right so <clears throat> I guess next up on the plate will be uh, putting the bumper on and seeing where we're at. Because this bumper right here, um, the few times I've run this truck has become a big um, detriment. I don't know what, what word to say. Detriment. It's not a plus, okay? Um, because it sticks out so far. If the wheels were out, say, right here, that would make all the difference. We have the uh, light gate in. We have uh, inadvertently uh, put a uh, body lift in on, on this thing. And we have some of the badging here on the back. The winch is on. The bumper's on. We'll just go ahead and light it up. Oh, there we go. All right, it's lit up, bumper's on. The bumper's a little bit crooked. Just gotta say it, it's a little bit crooked. All right, um, the bolts are not all the way in tight, but the one thing I like about this bumper is that, um, oops, up under here, there's four bolts there. There's two bolts right here. If you can see it right there and there so it's mounted at the front of this and at the bottom the one thing I'm gonna say if you buy this winch that uh, it'll come apart on you all right and if it comes apart well you're gonna have to try to figure out how to put it back together and that's what I had to do so um, here's the rear view Here's the review. Uh, tail lights work, side lights work. Everything works. And uh, I gotta say this uh, light kit worked, you know, is like excellent. I, I see uh, several other trucks I can use this actual light kit on and not have to delete um, maybe only two lights out of it. So, Anything else you want to see that I do to this thing, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I the yeah, bumper moved. Um, yeah, just let me know. Uh, I'm going to get this bumper mounted uh, securely. And so the next time uh, you see it, it'll be uh, working. Um, fender flare has worked out extremely well. It does sit a little high in the back. And it does in the front. Still debating on whether I should uh, uh, extend the wheelbase in the front, uh, bring it up closer to the bumper. If you look at the old bumper, the old bumper, uh, as you can see, it's much longer. 
and it sat, sits out just about as far as this one. <clears throat> but um, if I move the, the front wheelbase up, I should be able to uh, handle like say rocks or steep obstacles a lot better than uh, I did before. So the rear is not really an issue. The rear is what it is. I mean, I could move it back a little bit, but at full articulation, that's it, right? And I'm rubbing right there. If I move it back, uh, say two millimeter, it most likely will not rub. And uh, that's the beauty of uh, four link is that you can adjust that kind of thing. This video has been a bit of a mess. Um, I lost all the, the video I did before. So um, this is basically a start over and I saw it as a sign to start the mechanic, RC mechanic garage channel right now instead of uh, later. I've been toying with the idea, but <clears throat> tell me what you think. Leave a comment on anything you see here and uh, you know, who knows? I might be working on something big next time. But well, uh, for now, I'm gonna just stick it back there in the corner until I figure out what else I want to do it. You want to level the ride height? I don't know. I mean, we'll go from there. Maybe put a different motor in it. Maybe we'll go brushless. I don't know. Just let me know. Let me know what you think. I would really like to know. Uh, leave a comment. Make sure to subscribe. It's a free thing, you know. There's not many things that are free anymore, but that is. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.